إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فيا أيها المسلمون إن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ونعوذ بالله سبحانه وتعالى من النار We begin by praising Allah سبحانه وتعالى the one and the unique all praise and gratitude is due to He subhanahu wa ta'ala who sustains every waking moment of your existence and of my existence. All praise is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without whom nothing moves, nothing exists, nothing is born, nothing dies except by His permission and except by His knowledge. All praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon whom we place our reliance and our trust and to whom we dedicate all of our worship. We send salam upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, al-khatam al-anbiya wal-mursaleen, the seal of all prophets and messengers. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whose entire life was an example whose entire life was a legacy, whose entire life was a blueprint and a manual as to how the Muslim should live and exist on the earth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every single aspect of the Muslim's life on a daily basis, from the way that you wake up in the morning to the way that you go to sleep at night is detailed and exemplified and, and, and prescribed and kept through the life of the Prophet The announcements that we heard just before the, the beginning of the khutbah paint a picture for us of the society that we live in, of the time that we live in, where Many of our community members, many of our family members, not only in this community, but in communities across the state and across the country and across the world. Individuals are dying. Individuals are returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi, the last time I gave khutbah here, I stood here and I saw different faces. And the faces that I would see from the time I started to give khutbah at this masjid, and they used to be in the front row. Wallahi, I know many of them who have returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive them and have mercy on them. Many of the brothers that you used to see sitting in the front rows on the chair, some of the elder brothers that used to fill my right hand side of the masjid, many of them, they're unable to come. The situation has changed. The health of some of our community has declined. That's internally. Externally, the political climate of the world over is in constant shaking and rocking and uncertainty. When you turn on the news, Wallahi, you fear for yourself and your family. You fear for your future. You don't know. The uncertainty is there. And that is on an external macro level. Bring it back home a little bit. Still on an external level. Our communities and our societies, our homes, our families are still being plagued with disease and with virus. And there's uncertainty. And there is depression. And there is anxiety surrounding that as well. And all of these things that we've mentioned, all of these traumas, all of these causes for uncertainty, 
they occurred in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam seemingly all in a similar and short period of time. Where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he lived through a lot of the similar experiences that we are living in, in right now. And the feelings that we have, similar feelings were felt and expressed in that time of the Prophet Sallallahu life. And the culmination of those experiences is what we want to talk about today and draw some lessons from. Two or three lessons that we want to take from this experience of the Prophet Sallallahu So let's paint the picture of what happened. First of all, the, exter the internal support system of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was taken. I.e. his wife Khadija radiallahu anha, she passed away and she returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was his internal support. This was his internal comfort. This was the one who believed in him. This was his wife who comforted him, whom he had almost all of his children with. This is his wife whom he didn't marry anyone while he was married to her. This is the one whom after she passed away, the Prophet Wasallam still had extreme love for her. This is his internal support and she was taken from him. In that same year, his external support was also taken from him in his uncle. The one who stood by him even though he was not Muslim. The one who protected him from his own people even though he was threatened for it. Even though his family was threatened for it. The Prophet Wasallam was his nephew, yes. But he was the minority. And his uncle stood, uh, stood with him against his family, against the community, against all of those who disbelieved and who ridiculed and who rejected the Prophet ﷺ. This was his external support. This was his external protection. His internal and external protection were both taken from him. A test by Allah subhanahu wa from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala undoubtedly. What happened next? Obviously, the politics of Mecca are rocked and are shaken by religion. So for the last 10 years, when the Prophet ﷺ was calling people quietly, and then a little bit more and more and more, this was shaking the political climate of Mecca. Undoubtedly, this was causing political turmoil. Then the Prophet ﷺ, he says, you know what, okay, we're going to go to Taif. What happens when he goes to Taif? He's ridiculed, he's rejected, he's mocked, he's physically harmed when he goes to Taif. The place that he thought he was going to be accepted, people were going to support him, people were going to enter into the fold of Islam, he left bloody and bruised. What do you think the emotional state of the Prophet ﷺ was like? How do you think the Prophet ﷺ he felt in this time? What do you think his mental state was like? What do you think his emotional state was like ﷺ? But remember, and this is one of the lessons that we want to draw. He ﷺ, he did not despair in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He didn't lose reliance in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His belief did not shake and waver in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Leave the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's belief out of it. The belief of people around him did not shake and did not waver as we will come to. And so what happens after this? After this, this emotional roller coaster that the Prophet ﷺ went through, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends Jibreel to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he says, to bring my servant. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on a miraculous journey that we know as al-Isra wa al-Mi'raj. And from among the benefits of us looking and studying this journey, and we're not going to go over it in detail, the hadith are many and very long. Among the benefits of this is to see how the Prophet ﷺ was consoled. Imagine after all of that, a year of sorrow, being kicked out of Ta'if, all of the instability around the life of the Prophet ﷺ. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam directly to him. And not only that, but he gives the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam something that is invaluable. Something that brought the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comfort. Something that gave the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam strength, reinvigorated him. And so from the first of the lessons that we want to take from Al-Isra wa Al-Mi'raj is stay connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we mentioned, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he didn't disconnect from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He didn't, you know, break that connection, lose reliance, lose hope, lose trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same way we should not lose hope. The same way we should not lose trust. The same way we should keep our reliance in and with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no matter our circumstance and no matter our condition. Because as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, one ayah that we all know, after difficulty comes what? Comes ease. After difficulty comes ease. And know that the promises that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes, the promises that He gives, to his servants are true and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't go back on any of his promises the second lesson is the extreme blessing and extreme honor that it is to be called an abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he say what does he say when he's when he talks about isra asra bi abdi exalted and raised above everything is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who took his abd, who took his slave and servant. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is referred to by Allah as his slave. Understand that we are slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and while the word slave might leave a bad taste in your mouth and you may not like the fact that we use that word, that is what we are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is an honor that we are slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in this concept of being in an abd, know that it's not a transaction. This is not you give and you get. This is not a transaction. This is not tijara with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rather, this is you worship Allah. I worship Allah because I have to. I worship Allah because it benefits me, because Allah commanded me to, because I am His servant, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And many times we have this concept and this notion that I worship Allah, I do, I make dua, I call to Allah, and I'm supposed to get something right away. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. It's not a transaction with Allah. This is not a business transaction. I call to Allah and I get my product right away. It's not how this works. We are first and foremost slaves and servants and worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many people, they, they try to find, you know, what is my purpose in life? What is my passion in life? What is it that I want to do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He already told you what you're supposed to do. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ اِعْبُدُوا You were created to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I was created in the same way. 
So it is an honor to be from among those who were selected to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Treat it as an honor. Don't turn your back on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you don't see things falling from the sky. Because when you ask for something in your dua, you don't see it right away. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives as He wills. Call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Reach out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But don't become despondent if you don't see something right away. Something doesn't materialize in front of you. Know that when you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it doesn't go unanswered. But rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His infinite wisdom may not give you exactly what you ask for. You don't see it and you don't understand the wisdom, but Allah is Al-Hakim. And He knows why He's given you certain things and why He's kept certain things from you. It may be that you think something is good for you, but in reality it's bad and harmful for you. It may be that something is bad and harmful for you, but you think that it's good for you. And you think that you want it and that you need it. So when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you that which is best for you. The next lesson that we want to take is probably the one thing that jumps out when, it ta- when we talk about Isra wal Mi'raj. And that is the prayer, the salah. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went before Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he was given something that brought him comfort, that brought him solace, that he sought help and aid and assistance and comfort with throughout the rest of his life. And it's the prayer. And through that, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has made obligatory upon us the prayer. But I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to talk about Fajr al-Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha. That is one thing. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, ista'inu bil sabri wa salah. You know when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een? To you do we direct our worship and to you do we seek aid and assistance. Wasta'inu bil sabri wa salah. Seek that assistance through patience and through prayer. When you pray, you are in the closest position to your Creator. Have a conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, we have dua. But before dua, when the, sah- when the Sahaba would want something, when they would you know, need something, pray to rak'ah. And that's why I said leave the mandatory prayers to one side for now. That we know we have to do. But how often do we need something and do we want something and we want to feel comfort? And the first thing that comes to our mind is sujood. How often do we pray to rak'ah because we want to have a conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How often do we turn to Allah outside of that which is mandatory? We won't taste the sweetness of salah until we understand what salah is meant to do. Remembering Allah, coming close to Allah, is a way that our hearts come to ease and find rest. So while you may not be able to change the things around you physically, while you may not see a way out from what you're going through, and what's going on around you. Know that prayer and reliance and belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are invaluable. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ Those who have consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Consciousness in the sense that we believe in Allah, we worship Him. We know that He is one and He is alone. We put our trust and our reliance in Him and we know that nothing moves Nothing happens without the decree and the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He is ala kulli shay'in qadir. Allah is powerful and Allah knows and is able to do all things. When you have this type of taqwa, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ 
يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجَةً Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide a way for you out from any situation. And makhraja in this sense means from anything. He will provide for you a way out from anything. Whatever it is that you're going through that you can't find a way out of. وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجَةً Allah can provide for you and will provide for you a way out. Just like in the life of the Prophet wasallam, it didn't come right away. It wasn't there immediately. Some time passed. The Prophet went through some difficulty, some stress, some emotional turmoil. But at the end of it, after that period of difficulty, he wasallam, and the Muslims as a whole came to a period of ease. And above Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala providing for you a way out. He gives, He provides for you rizq, He provides for you money and food and provisions from places that you didn't even see it coming from. So you might be engrossed in your job and engrossed in work and engrossed in trying to make money and provide for yourself and your family and you neglect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you neglect your worship know that you're not neglecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but you're neglecting yourself because what you had to do and what was the better thing for you to do is to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show that taqwa show that you're conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we can't say that we are from among the muttaqeen and then we don't exhibit any of the behaviors of those who have taqwa. So how can we be from among the ones who Allah says that He provides a way out for? وَيَرْزَقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِرُ How are we going to get that rizq? How are we going to get that money? How are we going to get that provision? How, is, how are we going to level up our life if, Allah, if we don't turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it? Allah is promising that He's giving it to you, it's there for you. Sometimes all we have to do is go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, very famous ayah, that He doesn't change the condition of a people until they themselves change. How is it that you're going to expect and want and say that oh the Quran and the Khatib and the and the and the Jumu'ah khutbah is always about Allah gives and Allah promises and Allah wants to Allah loves you and all of this. But we don't when we leave Jumu'ah, from Jumu'ah to Jumu'ah, we don't make a change. We're spiritually high after this, but we don't take it as us making legitimate long-term changes in our life. And as I started off mentioning this front line. A lot of the faces that used to be in this front line are not here. Either because they have passed away or because physically they're unable to come. This is something right in our own message. It's something that we can see and notice. Understand that our time is limited. And understand that we have limited time to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we need to do that before it's too late. The last and final point that we want to mention is the belief. When the Prophet ﷺ came back and he told everyone about what had happened, that journey that he had went on, they didn't believe him. How could they? They see this man, he went and he's telling them that he went and he saw all of this and he went here and he came back all in one night. Remember, we said that the people around him, their belief didn't shake. Abu Bakr radiallahu an, he stands up and he says, yes, I believe in the Prophet sallallahu He speaks the truth. The belief system of the Muslim needs to be strong. He didn't waver in his belief in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just because you don't see something happening right in front of your eye doesn't mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forsaken you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, لا تقنطه من رحمة الله Don't despair. Don't despair in the forgiveness and in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then in another ayah, 
Allah inna nasrallahi qareeb. Know that the aid of Allah and the assistance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is close. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله النبي الكريم نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه الطيبين الطاهرين والحمد لله رب العالمين On this day of Jumu'ah, there's an hour where, whereby Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He accepts dua. Today, make dua for your brothers and sisters across the globe who are in difficult situations. We sometimes here in the United States, we are in difficult situations, but our brothers and sisters overseas, many times they're in a worse position than we are. Make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for them. Make dua for yourself and for your family. Make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heals the ones who are sick. With shifa and kamila, shifa that is complete. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us, grant us goodness in this life and in the life to come. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive and aid and protect our brothers and sisters all across the globe. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our living and our dead and that he grants us all Jannatul Firdaus. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum wa li sa'ilil muslimin fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafoor al-rahim wa qumu ila salatikum.